happy to be talking to you at React Native EU. I'm Alex, I'm a tech lead at BAM. We develop mobile apps in Kotlin, Flutter, and of course, React Native. And I'm particularly interested in the subject of mobile apps performance. And so I tend to audit a lot of apps performance and help teams analyze their performance issues. And as it turns out, there are several issues that come up quite often. So for fancies, I thought, hey, I will code an app with most of those issues so that we could have the joy and the fun of debunking them and sorting them out together. Let's dive in. So this is the app. It looks quite good on iOS uh, with a nice Wakandan banner to React Native EU, list of tweets, etc. But based on our research, a lot of our users actually have lower end Android phones, like this one, a Samsung J3 that I'm sharing via screen copy. And if I try the app on this one, and it's a release app, this is what it looks like. Uh, actually, it takes a lot of time to load, um, and the countdown is not even working. You can see that it's basically skipping a second all the time. So we have massive issues to investigate. But first, let's measure, because we severely need to improve the startup performance of our app, right? And we're going to do so over several iterations. But it would be nice to have a performance metric, a measure that we can use to make sure that every iteration actually improves our performance. And for that, we built a Flipper plugin called React Native Flipper Performance Mentor that you can use to track JS and UI FPS. However, whenever I talk about measuring performance, I always say that, you know, Performance measures are hardly deterministic, so you need to make them as deterministic as possible. And to do that, I always say that you need to average your measures over several iterations uh, as much as possible, keep the same conditions for every measure, and ideally automate the behavior you want to test, like scrolling, clicking, etc. But all of this is kind of tedious. Uh, with the plugin, you need to click start, you need to do some stuff, you need to click stop, then you need to do it again. There is no average anything, so you need to do it on your own. But today, I am very happy to introduce that we have a CLI version for it. And what's great is that it's fully automated. It requires no installation on your app whatsoever, which means that it can actually run on any Android app, even a release app, an Expo app, even a native app, not, not even a React native app for that matter. And so, Let's try it out. So our tool integrates quite well with any end-to-end -end testing framework like Appium or Dtalk. But here, you know, just using some ADB command to start and stop the app, uh, we can basically declare a performance tester coming from our module, profiler slash E2E, and make it iterate over a test scenario that just does, well, I just stop the app and start the app and then measure performance for a duration of 15 seconds. Then we make it write the results. All right, so wait, let me save it. And let's just run it with um, TS node because it's a TypeScript file. And we will see that it's running the 10 iteration. It's gonna be starting the app, measuring the performance for 15 seconds, stopping the app and doing that 10 times. So it's gonna take about three minutes. So I'll skip to the end of it. So now that this is done, it finished the 10 iterations. Um, if I put in a JSON file, luckily we can run npx per profiler slash web reporter on this JSON file to open it in a nice view. And ta-da! Um, yeah, we can see all the results and a bunch of metrics. Basically, we have the score, which is 31 out of 100, which is really bad, and a bunch of metrics such as FPS, CPU, and RAM usage. Uh, specifically here, we see that the thread MQTJS is, uh, has a heavy usage, and that's the JS thread. So actually, here you see the graph for the JS thread, and you can see that it's um, requiring a lot of CPU all the time, even after a few seconds. So we have a lot of issues to investigate on the JS thread. Since we have an issue on the JS side, we should use first React DevTools. Um, here, I'm actually using it on my higher-end Android phone because the JSI was so dead on my J3 that React DevTools was actually not working. Um, 
And here you can see with the performance monitor that actually the JS is struggling even on this high-end phone and, you know, nothing is happening. I'm not doing anything. So let's try to figure out what's going on. Uh, first, if you use Brack Dev Tools, make sure that you uh, check this, record why each component render while profiling. This will be very useful. So we should click here to start recording and profiling the performance. And here we can just wait a bit without doing anything because, well, apparently something happens that completely destroys the performance already. So let's stop this. All right. So top right here, we can see that we have 12 comments. So comments are phases where React actually applies any changes. It renders new component, it updates some components, uh, some neat on the native side basically and here well we can see that we have 12 phases 12 uh, comments where react applies any change and well for example if we take the first one here uh, we can see below the hierarchy of components in our app starting with the root component react native feed uh, to some well basically the leave components Everything that is in gray is not rendering, so that is quite good. However, everything that is in a different color, like green or yellow, is actually rendering or re-rendering. So for example, here we have tweet stamp rendering, and it's quite expensive to render. So if I click on it, you can see that um, it's taking a total of 400 milliseconds to render. That's the total time, and it's self time aka the time that it took to render without any of its children is already 217 milliseconds which is weird so basically twitch tab is expensive to render so okay that's an issue we're gonna have to deal with but first why is our tweets tab actually re-rendering when you know nothing much is happening all right so react devtools actually tells it to us it says hook 16 changed Okay, so at the moment, the only way to know what is this hook 16 is to go on the components tab. And here on the tweets tab component, you have the list of hooks. And we should check uh, which one has 16. And actually, the one that is that has 16 is in use countdown. Uh, because in our hook called use countdown, we have a use state. Well, you know, we could have guessed it because, well, the comments actually happened. Um, every second or so but why is it that every time the countdown you know is happening or tweet stab is actually re-rendering all right well let's check the code here it is you can actually see that we have use countdown here inside the render of tweet stab and in this use countdown we use a state to store the countdown timestamp and we set interval every second basically we change the state which makes a lot of sense I mean, I don't really know a better way to, to do this. Um, however, here, since this is inside Tweets tab, this means that every second, the whole Tweets tab will update. So, you know, we could memoize the rest of the component that doesn't need to update, but also we could be wondering, like, why is this in Tweets tab? Because there's this whole component here which could basically be extracted into its own. Uh, a countdown banner, for example. And this new component here should have the use countdown. And then, of course, yeah, we need to add countdown banner here uh, so that it reappears. Maybe I just need to update. And already, just moving components around. Oh, actually crashed. Okay. Just moving components around. Uh, we should be able to see that performance is already much better because now, whenever the countdown updates, only the countdown banner re renders. So you can see that now the JS is almost back to seven uh, to sixty. Sorry. And so if we go back to um, the Flipper DevTools, and we try to record something, it should be much better than before. Remember, before we had comments of 500 milliseconds, now we have comments of 18 milliseconds every second, because only this guy here, the countdown banner that we created, 
um, is re-rendering. So just by following, you know, single responsibility principle and making sure that what needs to update is, is at the right place, you know, uh, we've already made significant improvement to the performance of the app. But could we even go further? Because here, basically, we have data updating often. And that happens quite often, like, for example, for light matches, for football, or, or stuff like this, you might have like data updating very fast. And in this case, you want to make sure that your updates are contained to the smallest component possible uh, to be at the top performance. For example, here, when the countdown changes, yeah, we basically just want to re-render the second count here. I mean, sometimes the other ones, but usually it's only the second here that needs to re-render. And even, you know, this whole countdown banner already takes 18 milliseconds to re-render. So can we do better than that? So to do this, best way is usually to use a state management tool. And for this, actually, Jota is quite nice because um, I won't go into too many details. I might write a blog post or something about this. But you can basically create an atom for your uh, countdown with Jota, derive the value that you want for days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and then you can create some React component that just display text, days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and use them into your uh, fast countdown component with days, hours, minutes, and seconds. And so, if I do this and replace this guy here with fast countdown and disable this here, uh, so I don't need this anymore. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's see what this gives us. So if I go back to Flipper, uh, I take another profile. I stop profiling. And now each, each of my comets actually is only 0 0.5 milliseconds to render. I'm not sure what happened here, but well, Anyway, uh, because actually it's quite, it's even hard to find what I, what I actually updated uh, because it's this tiny guy here, start countdown, and then it's, wait, and then it's, well, it's, it's harder to find than I thought, and then it's this guy here, seconds, that is really small, really cute and tiny, and so now, Every second, we basically just have 0 0.4 milliseconds of a render happening. So this is much better. Um, we still have some issues to check, actually, because the JS is still not at 60. And the startup, as we were able to see, is not fantastic. But before moving on to the rest of the issues, we could measure the changes on the J3. And luckily for you, I already took those measures, and since I'm quite um, paranoid about making changes in development mode and uh, making sure that those changes actually impact production, I decided to measure all things in production. And so with the sense script as before, uh, I was able to have a new, um, a new, 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 a new JSON file with all the performance measures. And using performance profiler, just like before, I can, uh, so third profiler slash red book order, just as before, I can open it. But if I pass in several uh, JSON file, so this is the previous JSON file that I renamed to init.json, and this is going to be a new one, uh, which I measured on this version of the app called FastTimer. If I pass several JSON files to the web reporter, then I can actually get a comparison. On the left, we have the previous version of the app, and on the right, we have the new version with the fast timer. So you can compare the different metrics, but, but, but the biggest change is, well, first, the score went from 31 to 53, so yay. Um, but the biggest change is that we went from the jet thread being blocked for an average of 9 seconds to an average of less than 4 seconds. 
Uh, and indeed, if we open the CPU graph, we can see that actually the J spread in purple or the second version is, you know, descending much lower than the first one after a few seconds. However, well, we still see that, you know, the usage is super high um, in the beginning. So we can investigate further the start of the app. The thing is, yeah, we should do this with Flipper again. The thing is, it's kind of tricky to investigate the start of the app. If, well, you know, whenever you reload the app, actually the React DevTools will reload as well. I have a stupid trick to deal with that. It's just that at the root of your app, um, just add a button that you display conditionally. Um, it's, it's, it's very silly. Basically, we have a button called render app. When I click it, it will render the whole app, which means that now I can actually use React DevTools, click start profiling, render the whole app, wait a bit for the app to render because we can see that it's still pretty heavy and reminder that I'm still on S10 actually. So I'm analyzing the performance issues now on S10 because it was so awful to do it on the debug version on the day three, but the performance measures with the big tools, the big tool were made on, on the J3, on the release version. So if I stop recording, oops, stop profiling, um, yeah, we can see tons of comets, but those very small comets here uh, are just due to the timer, which we fixed. So let's just hide them, like hide, let's hide the comets uh, below 10 milliseconds. Okay, now we have only, only 18 comets. So um, we should take a look at the biggest ones, I guess. We have this one which renders the tweets tab and it costs about 800 milliseconds. And we have this one, which renders the tweets tab and it takes about 600 milliseconds. And we have this one, which renders the tweets tab. Okay, so we have three comments rendering the tweets tab. <laughs> um, so again, the tweets tab is pretty heavy to render and we should investigate that. But the question here is, why is the tweets tab re-rendering? So again, we can check. We can see that the tweets tab is re-rendering this time because hook 12 changed. So if we check in the components, whoop, wait, I can just select it here and then in the component, it will already be uh, selected. And I can see that, okay, one, two, three, five. So I'm using rec query. So this is why you have the use query here. Uh, this the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so we have here twelve. So twelve is a use state inside use base query inside use query. All right, and I'm guessing the other comment update is because of the other use query. Hook seven changed. So if we check, yeah. So. Two use queries are actually updating uh, my tweet tab. So if we take a look at the code, of course, uh, on tweets tab, we can indeed see that we have a use feed. Okay, loading the feed. And we have two other use queries. And those use query are fetching the user and the user stats to display here the, the header, the user header. However, it's kind of the same as the countdown, right? We fetch the user, the data of the user changes, and so the whole tweet tab is re-rendering and same for the user stats. So I think we should just do the same as before. Um, because here, I mean, of course, like we could memoize this to say that this doesn't change if, if user changes, but it's better to just separate, um, separate or wait, we actually do have a component called user header. So let's just go in it. And instead of uh, returning just a simple component and taking the user header, we should just um, get those two queries here. And 
uh, whoop, user does not exist, uh, yep, because, whoop, I'm not so great, and this is live recording, you can already see that I'm not so great at live coding, even though this is actually a recording, so luckily I'm not doing this on the stage, um, anyway, yeah, we refactored the hooks to actually the use query hooks to get into the user header because user header should be the component responsible for fetching its own data. And this is actually the second issue I wanted to talk about. Is that you should it's not the same as the first one, but it's you should follow single responsibility principle. Each component should be able to load its own data because otherwise, if you load the data, for example, at the root of your app then the whole app will re-render so many times and it's very annoying to try to memoize everything and sort through that. Like memoizing would help, yes, but it would be easier actually if everything is, you know, in smaller uh, components and then you have less re-rendering. So if we check it in uh, React DevTools again in the profiler, so let's see here, profiling, Render app. I mean, still pretty bad. So we have some other issues, obviously. But let's stop profiling. And now we have a bit less comments, right? All right so here we have our first comment basically uh, rendering Twitch tab for the first time. But now um, at least Twitch tab is not re rendering in the other comments. So all right, we still have some very expensive comments coming up, but before we dive into them, uh, let's check, let's measure on the J3 on the release version of the app. So luckily for you guys, I've already built uh, the, the uh, release version of the app and I've already taken the measure. Uh, so let's compare between, sorry, the previous JSON file to the new JSON file that I've entitled uh, to user header. And let's open it. And we can see that our score went from 53 to 67, uh, just by moving some hooks into another component. Um, and our total, you know, JS was dead for only 1.4 seconds now, so much better. But let's continue. Because if we take a look again at the Flipper um, DevTools um, profiling, we can see that we have a very heavy comment here. And this comment actually renders likes tab, media tab, and replies tab. But we, when we open the app, why would we render those tabs? We don't need to render them. And so this is the third issue. It's you're rendering too much, too much items. You're rendering some stuff that you don't need to be rendering. In this case, this is easily fixed because, well, um, we're using natural top tab uh, navigator from React Navigation, and luckily it has a uh, it has a yeah you can pass the screen option here with lazy set to true. And so if you try this again, wait sorry, let me reload the app up. And so if we try the trace again. Uh, in DevTools, render app. All right, we can see that it's already kind of faster. Uh, stopping, yeah, we see only eight comments now, and it's it's much better. Uh, it's much better than before. So, same as usual, if we just take a look at the performance measures uh, with our super tool and compare to user header with our new measure that I already took for you guys, because again, it takes still three minutes and there would not be time in the, in the recording with lazy tab. We can see that we went from 67 to 75, but small improvement. Uh, plus since, you know, there was uh, less item to be rendered actually CPU usage uh, went on quite heavily uh, on average. So this is quite cool. All right. But, okay, I've been avoiding this for a while now. Tweets tab is really heavy to render, right? 
It takes 700 milliseconds. And here we can see that its self time is 374 milliseconds. So more than half of like, you know, I can get that the list is heavy to render, but why, why do, what does this mean? So this means that actually in the render function of tweets tab, there is something that is really heavy. Um, some heavy calculation probably. And sometimes it's hard to figure out uh, just by looking at the code or by React DevTools alone. So in those cases, I like to use uh, to actually record a trace, a Hermes, uh, a, I mean, a trace with the Hermes profiler and then open it in Google Chrome to see uh, what's what's the issue. And so let's do this. Um, all right, so you need to make sure, I'll reload the app. You'll need to make sure if you want to do that, that in your app build cradle, you have a bundle in debug activated and set to true, which is not the case here. So let's add it. Uh, this will make sure that what you see in, in, in your trace that we will see uh, will be actually readable. I've rebuilt the debug app with it, uh, with bundle and debug. And so, well, documentation about this is pretty detailed on, on um, uh, the React Native documentation, but let me show you how it's done. So you want to press T here, enable sampling profiler to start recording profiling, just like we would do on React DevTools. Then do whatever you want in our, in your app. In our case, it's rendering the app. Uh, press D again, enable sampling profiler again, uh, which actually disables it, and it saves a trace on the device. And then you have this neat comment, React Native Profile Hermes uh, dot, to make sure that you actually pull the trace file and convert it to something that can be read from Google Chrome directly. So let's open Google Chrome. And Google Chrome, we can open the developer tool, performance tab, and here we can load the trace that we just uh, downloaded from the device. All right, it's going to be processing it. You might see, but you can ignore this, uh, some issue in the console. Uh, and yeah, you should see only one thread, well, the JS thread basically, that you can uh, expand here. And this is basically a plain graph similar to what you would see in the React DevTools, only way more detailed uh, because you can see some stuff, you know, what actually happens inside the React code even. And well, in our case, it's tweets tab that interests us, so let's search for it. Uh, we have two results here, but it's very small. Uh, we have another result, which is here, which is more interesting. I can zoom in with W on it. Um, whoop, let me go down a little bit. And we can see here that it takes 400 milliseconds to render um, because of view speed that takes 400 milliseconds to, to, to calculate because of something called filter tweets. Uh, and so let's check why filter tweets is heavy because it's calling get tweet weekday uh, which takes, like it's it's calling it a lot actually, and it takes every time uh, something like 30 milliseconds, and and then it calls parse, which is already quite heavy. Um, so basically, filter tweets here is really too heavy to calculate because it seems that there is a filter and then a find uh, on, on the tweets and then some heavy date calculation. So actually. You know, whenever you deal with dates, uh, just parsing the dates with any tool can be quite heavy if you do it a lot of times. So checking our code, we have indeed our function filter tweets, which is quite stupid. It runs through all the tweets and it checks if, you know, the parse date in format uh, English um, is, is, is one of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So basically that's our new issue, a function with high algorithmic complexity. And we can just very simply uh, change it to something that, you know, we just 
take the weekday from it from the date we don't even need to use parse uh, here i was using date fns and we'll return if weekday is over one and under five so now if we go back to our react dev tools and oof, let's reload the app first there you go if we go back to the react dev tools and up we render the app i'm just gonna quit that and we stop profiling uh we can see that our heavier comet is here rendering tweets tab and yeah basically tweets tab takes only 1.7 millisecond to render now in in stealth time i mean the rest of it is basically just uh the list rendering so let's check our measures and with our super tool earth profiler slash web reporter and so this time we'll be comparing our previous measure with the new one and we should see a significant improvement especially in cpu usage we can see here that it's going down a lot especially because the js thread actually is, is, is not even reaching i mean the highest point is 70 and then it's much better than before all right so that was the fourth issue algorithm algorithmic complexity all right so where do we stand now mm, we still have a lot of cpu usage uh, high cpu usage but not for so much time um but our average fps is not very good it's always around 50. so what's going on so on the s10 i cannot see that i see that it's always at 60 fps so let's bring up the debug app on the j3 now because this is where we can see that it's not running at 60 fps so indeed we can see that the ui thread fps is going down even when we do nothing also the jet thread is actually following because um just spread measures get reported on the UI thread. So if the UI thread is down, well, the measures are down, not because the chest is too busy, but because the UI thread is actually busy. But anyway, we have issues on the UI thread. Um, what can we do? Uh, we can go to Android Studio uh, here. And then in the profiler tab here, we can attach it to our app. And if we select CPU, here we actually have several tools that we can use to, you know, I encourage you to try them out. But today we're going to try the Java Kotlin method trace recording. And basically, okay, I'm starting recording. What it's going to print out is a plain graph, just like in Chrome for the JS side. But here on the native side, everything that happens on the native side. In our case, we care about the UI thread. Uh, the UI thread is also named the main thread, so let's check this guy out. And the UI thread is responsible for displaying uh, 60 frames per second, you know. So every 16 milliseconds, basically what happens is we can see here there is something called a class called choreographer uh, calling do frame, and this should uh run in less than 16 milliseconds uh to make sure that the app is smooth and here we can see everything that it's actually calling uh we can see that indeed this guy here is taking more than 16 milliseconds uh 50 milliseconds which is uh pretty crazy so the question is well what's going on and we can see here for example that it's calling uh, React Native animated module, do frame, update nodes, etc., etc., and deep down we're setting some transform. So we can see that something heavy is happening on the UI thread. We have a running animation. We have a long running animation, and here then we can see that it's actually drawing um, to be, you know, like it's updating some animated value with transform and then it seems to be updating those and this is what's actually heavy uh like this is this should happen in less than 16 milliseconds but here it's taking 50 milliseconds 
Um, so here the question is, what is this running animation? Um, so, <laughs> wow, this is not one of the most common issues I get actually, but here, it's not this guy here that's uh, using animated, but actually uh, we have our skeleton loader here, which is still running behind uh, the list. Uh, for example, if I comment children here, it's actually running behind uh, our list, and this is what's actually causing the drop in the UI thread. Um, this actually happened on two projects that I know. Uh, it was just to show you that in this case, we can go through Android Studio to figure out what's going on. Uh, so obviously, if we fix this and make sure that the skeleton loader here does not display, um, you know, when it's finished loading, then it's going to be much better. So let's check again our performance with our script and compare it with before. All right, we can see that this is a lot better. Um, on the FPS side of things, specifically, we're achieving smooth 60 uh, quite soon. But can we do even better? Well, one last method of investigation is to check the thread usage. Uh, usually, most of your issues would come from the JS thread in a React Native app. But here, the JS thread is actually you know, not doing much. Uh, because we improved it so much. If we check the list of threads below, we can see actually that the thread consuming the, the highest CPU usage is the render thread and the thread crawl called Chrome in POC or something. A thread called Chrome, and you can see here that it's running heavily, it's running steadily at 20% all the time. It should, you know, uh, make you guess that we have a heavy web view. And if you have web view where you don't control the content, like ads or whatever, like ad mob, it can actually completely kill the performance of your app. And here, just a small web view has a massive impact. In our case, the web view is actually this. Um, I took the GIF of the website um, for React Native EU and I put it in a uh, sample page and I'm displaying it in web view and it's basically killing the performance of my app well not killing but it's it has a big impact because for example if I replace it with a gif and then take some new measures let's see what it gives us and indeed we're finally at 96 out of a hundred Woo! all right this was a lot we encountered so many issues the first one was that data updating often should be contained. That was the canon. Second one was about the header uh, needing to fetch its own data. The third one was about the tabs that needed to be lazy and not render all the tabs where necessary. Uh, fourth one was, you know, the feed needing to filter and it was costing too much. Fifth one was the animation running in the background while it was not needed. And the sixth one, was about a heavy web view. And I haven't even talked about some other issues that you might encounter quite often, like list, I guess, just give flash this go, or images, just, you know, follow the best practices out there. We also used Android Performance Profiler or new CLI tool to measure, and we use React DevTools, Thermos Profiler, Android Studio, and just investigate threads to analyze all performance issues. All right, I hope this was fun for you. Um, Thanks for your attention. Give the plugin a go. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. I tweet mostly about uh, performance. Thank you and have a great conference.